2023 was a year of big accomplishments for Fortuna Silver. 2024 could shape up to be even better. Today, we're fortunate to be joined by Jorge Ganoza. He's the CEO of Fortuna Silver. Jorge, welcome to Ron's Basement. Ron, a pleasure to join you in the basement again. Yeah, well, Jorge, I, I can't get over uh, just a few days ago, you released your 2023 uh, earnings, uh, put out some production numbers, other operational metrics, and everywhere I look on the report, I get excited. Uh, do you want to talk about what you think are a couple of the big highlights of what you accomplished during 2023? First, production, no, or, or business is underpinned by physical metrics of uh, production and, and delivery of ounces. Uh, when we look at the quarter, we had record gold equivalent production of 136,000 ounces of gold run. Um, you know, and uh, looking onward into 2024, we have guided already for, for what will be another record year, you know, when we look at it on an annual basis of gold production. So first, uh, strong production in the quarter, a good strong close for the year with 452,000 ounces of gold. <clears throat> in the ter in terms of cost, uh, we came in at around fifteen hundred dollars per ounce for the year and the quarter. Remember that the uh, average all-in sustaining cost for the global gold mining industry is currently around fourteen hundred dollars per ounce. So we came in slightly higher uh, above uh, average. Uh, ASIC for the world gold mining industry, and I expect we can bring that cost down as we make some investments and get past some investments we're making in 2024. Uh, but more importantly, you know, all of this production and cost meant that we generated record sales of $265 million in the quarter. So we are on track to generate over a billion dollars in, in metal revenue annually. And uh, free cash flow. In the quarter, we generated $66 million of free cash flow from ongoing operations. And this is consistent with what we generated in the previous quarter, uh, in the third quarter of 2023, when we delivered $70 million of free cash flow. So <clears throat> starting in, in, in mid-2023, as we've been uh, indicating to our investors, we reached an inflection point in cash flow generation, and the business has been delivering, uh, not only meeting, but exceeding our expectations on ounces, on cost, and therefore on free cash flow. Right. You've worked almost 20 years to build this company, and it feels like to me, because I do follow the company very closely, that you're gaining momentum. And I think especially if uh, if we move into 2024 with the strong metals prices that we've seen so far, I'm very excited about the prospects of what we could see uh, in the coming year. But if we look back, uh, as you as you mentioned, at 2023, the amount of cash that the that the company generated from operations, free cash flow, is very exciting. And um, if we do move into an even higher metals environment, uh, one question I would have for you, Jorge, is what are you going to do with all this cash? I know uh, that you paid off. $105 million of debt over the last 12 months, probably the last six months, actually. Uh, any other plans? I mean, once there's a, a sufficient debt paid down, any other plans on how you might deploy this cash as we move into the future? You're touching on the most important point, which is uh, what we try to offer to our shareholders. We want to offer optionality on the metal price, right? And uh, at a time when prices are increasing, we are coming up with more ounces and low cost ounces. So in the fourth quarter, with our record production, record sales, record free cash flow, uh, we achieved that with average, uh, achieving and uh, realizing an average gold price run of $1,990. That was the price at which, you know, the average price we sold or gold at in the fourth quarter. Today, this morning, we're trading 
gold is trading at two thousand one hundred and eighty dollars. No, hopefully yeah. we'll see uh, an attempt on uh, you know two thousand two hundred dollars. But uh, you know what that means is that we have a company that's positioned to generate even stronger free cash flow. And uh, what are our capital allocation priorities with all that money? Well, one is we believe a mining company should be run with a fortress balance sheet. And uh, we're working to provide strong flexibility through debt reduction. We're not a highly debt leveraged company. Uh, today, your debt to EBITDA ratio, which is a common metric used with the banks, is a low 0.2 when the covenant allows as much as three times uh, debt to EBIT uh, in the ratio. We are currently at 0 0.2. And uh, our, our total debt, uh, net debt, sits at around $83 million at the end of the quarter. And as you said, you know, in, in little over six months, we have advanced uh, payments towards the facility in excess of $100 million and selling gold at prices that at the time were below $2,000 per ounce, where we know today we're closer to 2,200, right? So uh, exciting times for, for us. Yeah. And it, it also feels like to me uh, that during 2023, the production profile of the company, obviously you've been pivoting for a number of years towards more gold production, but in terms of where the gold is being produced, we know the Seguela mine uh, has started out as a as a great success in Africa. That you've your your more of your production is now moving towards the West African region, um, and that those those are much lower cost ounces. Is that a fair assessment? Yes. Today, our production breakdown is almost half half, uh, and yes. Or, or low cost or growth is coming today from West Africa, and those are low, lower cost ounces, right? So, you know, we are anchored in these two exciting mining regions of the world, uh, Latin America and, uh, and West Africa. And uh, today the growth is coming from West Africa. From West Africa, and I know just this morning you released uh, uh, some some exploration results, uh, both at the Seguela project and the Diambasud project uh, in Senegal. Let's 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 zoom in on uh, on Seguela first and just talk about briefly because I, I think you've had some incredible success uh, so far with that mine. Uh, it's producing above nameplate. Uh, give us kind of a rundown on how the first maybe six months have gone at uh, Seguela. You know, uh, building, commissioning, you know, ramping up a mine is never easy. Uh, it's challenging, but uh, the team, our team at uh, Seguela has done a superb job through construction into the ramp up phase. In the third quarter of 2023, we delivered 31,000 ounces of gold. And in the fourth quarter, we have delivered 43,000 ounces of gold. But more importantly, at an all-in sustaining cost under $800 per ounce. You know? So uh, those are industry-leading costs, significant, you know, not only production, but growth in production. Uh, so the team has been exceeding, not, not meeting, but exceeding expectations. We yeah. exited the fourth quarter with the mine and mill producing at a rate that's 26% above nameplate capacity in the original design. So, you know, every time you build something, you allow a bit of uh, wiggle room and, and comfort in the design, no? In case... Yeah. You know, things change and vary. Well, and it's always an expectation that you can capture some of those opportunities in the design to push throughput. Well, here we've been able to capture all of the opportunities that we had built in the design. And, you know, the team is pushing hard the boundaries of the processing plant and mine. And as I said, we're currently doing today over 30% uh, 
design capacity. So we're very happy with it. Yeah, I'm, uh, I, I, I don't think we can emphasize that enough, Jorge. You are, I mean, I would say that 26 to 30% is uh, a, little, a little more than a little wiggle room. You guys have done an outstanding job. And I think what's, uh, what I find exciting about Seguela is um, opportunity for additional growth. I know that there's been a, a great deal of exploration. I mean, this, this is not a static project that there's opportunity for both the resource to grow and is there opportunity for expanding the mill, expanding the the mining operations uh, beyond the beyond the twenty five to thirty percent that you've already uh, exceeded? To answer that, let me start by saying that you know, room to play, the concept of the area that we have to carry exploration, we hold a commanding land position at our Segela mine. We control thirty kilometers along the belt that hosts the right rocks and the right structures for mineralization. Within that, we have multiple uh, prospects. And out of that is that we have the six deposits that we currently hold in inventories, Boulder, Aguti, and Cien, Kula, and Sandberg. And we're adding a new one, which is uh, named in today's news release. Uh, I invite you to look at that. Yeah. The team named it a Kingfisher. So this is a, a new emerging uh, deposit, uh, only a few kilometers from the existing plant. And that speaks to the potential for discovery that we hold in this property, right? So we are excited. We are drilling. We have over 200,000 meters of drilling in our exploration budgets across the property portfolio this year. And, uh, Seguela receives uh, about twenty-five uh, percent of that budget, right? Wow, wow, yeah, very, very exciting. And I think, uh, if I understand it correctly, you're even uh, it kind of looking at the potential to do underground mining at Seguela. That's an important, an important opportunity. So it's not just the the exploration and and the excitement that we get from the drill bit and and trying to continue growing the resources at Seguela but also other optimization opportunities. And the underground uh, trade-offs uh, have begun late last year. And uh, we believe that the mine will eventually be a combination of open pit mining and underground mining, allowing us to be more efficient as we go deeper on, the, on, on all the mineralization that remains open at the bottom of the pits. You know, or, or pits, the mineralization in our pits in our resources is not closed by any means, uh, remains open. And, and uh, we're currently seeing how we get those deeper ore shoots or mineralized shoots out uh, through through underground. And yes, we're, we're doing those trade-offs and studies as we speak. Okay. Well, now, now that you're a, a multi-geographic region uh, company, if we come back to Latin America, if we touch on Lindero, that was you know, when I first started following your company, that was the mine that was being built uh, during the COVID crisis, uh, which complicated matters, but you got the job done. The Lindero mine is up and running, uh, but right now you've made a decision to make a big investment in a leach pad uh, expansion. Is that correct? Almost $40 million at Lindero? Yes. In 2024, we carry a $41 million budget in our in our capital and uh, it is in our sustaining cost mm -hmm. for 2024 so our, our sustaining cost is looking elevated if you look at uh, what it means in terms of dollars per ounce we're carrying about 400 dollars per ounce yeah. uh, in the ASIC attributable to this one project and it's a project that will serve the mine for a decade but we have to build it in one year. Yeah. So, you know, we carry all of that cost in, in, in one year. And that's, you know, how how uh, the World Gold Council uh, guides we should report ASIC, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, it, it is a big, heavy load to carry in one year because that's when we're making the, the investment. 
But again, it's a project that will serve the mine for, for over a decade. So if we would adjust the ASIC for those $400, the mine is operating at around $1,500, $1,400 per ounce, which is in line with the industry average. No, The, the global gold mining industry today is producing gold at an average ASIC of around $1,400. Yeah, yeah, but I think it's important for the viewer to 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 realize what you said. You're taking that hit this year, uh, but that will serve the mine for uh, for for ten years. What about Peru, uh, Jorge? How are how are things at the Cayoma mine going? You know, there is no headache-free mine, but if there is one that comes close to that, that would be yeah. the Cayoma mine. Yeah, the team there does a wonderful job, performs steady, and uh, the mine has been at a steady state for a number of years. And as the mine's been going deeper, and we've been pushing the exploration on the deeper ore shoots to the northeast end of the main vein animas, we continue finding high grade polymetallic mineralization, basically silver, lead, zinc. Sometimes we get a gold kicker or a copper kicker. Uh, but uh, the mine steady at around 1,500 tons per day, mine and mill throughput, a steady performer. Today is our smallest mine in the portfolio and the smaller free cash flow contributor, but it always contributes. If you're looking to buy gold, silver, or platinum, do yourself a favor and check out Pimbex, the online precious metals bullion dealer and sponsor of Ron's Basement. I was a happy customer before they offered to support the channel. You'll find they have the best prices, quality, and service. I think Pembex is best, and you will too. And be sure to tell them that you're from Ron's Basement. And and if we move, uh, I guess, north to Mexico, uh, you took a big non-cash charge in the fourth quarter. Um, if we if we look at the San Jose mine right now, I want to ask you a couple of questions. It's still operating right now. It's scheduled uh, to close at the end of 2024. Uh, but at this point, uh, and please correct me if I'm wrong, uh, it's basically been completely written off. Um, and I think a lot of the analyst community too, aren't giving it really any value when they're, when they're uh, putting their models together uh, for where they think the stock price could be. But I have two questions for you with, with San Jose. Um, I know that that uh, that you're continuing to do some exploration. I think there was a recently discovered, is it Yesi vein uh, that that came through. Uh, I want to ask you about that. And then the second part of that question would be if if we were to get higher silver prices, if we were to get thirty, thirty five dollars silver, uh, how much of an impact could that have? on the decision to maybe extend the life of the mine? Because like like I said, right now, as far as I can see, it's kind of been written down to zero. Yes, you are correct. Uh, analysts from the different banks have a, are assigning basically zero to negligible NAV to our San Jose mine today. And we have taken a $90 million uh, impairment charge right off of the value on the asset in the fourth quarter. The market was uh, smart enough to look beyond that non-cash charge in our financial results. Yeah. Uh, but you said something, the mine set for closure. I would frame it like this. The mine is set to exhaust its, its reserves by year end, no? Now, mm -hmm. will we close it? Will we place it on care and maintenance? Will we continue operating at a smaller rate? I believe that still has to be defined. We're in no position today to make a, a categoric statement regarding okay. the closure of the mine. No, To me, mine closure implies uh, initiating closing of the tailings facility, remediation of the tailings facility, uh, lifting existing infrastructure. Uh, but we currently have exciting exploration in front of us. We have resources. We have exhausted, the, we're exhausting the reserves, but not the resources. So our, our mine team, or planning team is currently 
uh, doing a second pass, trying to optimize uh, the higher grade portions of existing resources to see if we can fit them into the mine plan next year. Uh, and of course, always the optionality on higher prices. To your point, yes, if we, we see a surge in, in silver, uh, in gold, we will have to reassess uh, the, the research, the mine plans. So what I would say is that we have uh, we are updating or or you know or, or mine closure plan, but any we do not have right now a conclusive uh, decision on uh, how are we gonna move forward with that. That will probably have more clarity towards mid year once our exploration programs are more advanced and our optimization studies complete then we will be in a better position to gauge if the mine goes into a current maintenance or we can gap at smaller throughput rates into 2025 and then increase or, or, or still a bit uh, too many moving parts right now no yeah too many right parts. we need a bit more time but yes today the reserves are exhausted as we reported them at, at, uh, at the beginning of the year, the reserve will be exhausted by by end of 2024. Um, now, does that mean a mine closure? We'll need to understand the outcomes of our exploration and optimization studies before we make that conclusion. Sure, sure. It's it's much more complicated than just pressing a red one red button and shutting the mine down. A lot of uh, variables and factors. And, you know, play. and one is the exploration of the Yesi vein. You know? mm -hmm. We are currently drilling. We're hitting good grades. Uh, we we need more time to see if that exciting discovery turns into an exciting resource that we can plug in into our reserves and mine plants. There, that's a gap that you need to bridge always. The, many you see many companies making exciting discoveries and then nothing happens. Right. You know? Because these are two different things. One is an exciting discovery. Another one is turning that exciting discovery into something you can chew. Yeah. Right? Yep. And, and that, <laughs> right. that's where we are right now. And I think we're getting, you know, the, the kind of results that will be supportive of, of uh, producing uh, uh, an exciting resource. But we need more time. We need more yeah. time. Well, well, speaking of exciting discoveries, if we go back across the ocean to West Africa, uh, last year you acquired from uh, Chesser Resources a project called Diamba Sud in Senegal. And um, I want you to share with us, uh, if you will, two things. Number one, what your strategy has been. That's a That was a development stage project. But it feels like you're you're uh, you're kind of reassessing uh, to to more effectively define what's going on there. Uh, but also this big exploration update that we got just this morning. Um, if you if you wouldn't mind speaking to that for a few moments. Yes, uh, Chesser Resources, an Australian company that owned and developed the project, did an excellent job. Uh, in two years, they went from a a, a soil anomaly. Or an artisanal field uh, of gold, artisanal gold miner field, and a soil, gold in soil anomaly, into an 850,000 ounce resource. They did that in two years. They did excellent work. And then we acquired the company, acquired the project. You know, still the project is sub million ounces. So, we would like to see it north of a million ounces before we consider a production construction decision. Uh, and also we need more work to better understand and learn more about the controls of mineralization in the mineral deposit. Enhance our knowledge of the mineralized body of the ore body. So, we started late last year a 45,000 meter drill program that's well advanced by now. And uh, with two aims, one, increase our knowledge of the ore body and second, expand it, grow it. Uh, you know, we produced today our, our first uh, news release on, on, on results. It's looking very promising. 
uh, we have allocated a $3 million budget to engineering and environmental work. So by year end, based on results, contingent on results, if we produce, a, we will produce a PEA and based on the outcomes of the PEA, we can, if we decide to do so, fast track it to production. But in order to fast track it, as I said, we also, the, usually the long, the, the critical path becomes permitting. So we're advancing environmental and engineering studies in support of the permitting, right? For example, for environmental studies run, you need a year of collecting data on weather patterns, precipitation, biodiversity, right? So yeah. we're collecting all of that data uh, with time in advance and, and uh, building a robust base for the project for uh, if and when we decided to fast track it into production. Hopefully, if everything works well, that's a decision we can consider in uh, towards the end of this year. Jorge, I have a question for you. You've, uh, you over the last almost 20 years, if I have that correct, you've built this company um, uh, from its infancy uh, to what it is today. I, I, I've heard recently a couple people uh, describe the great success that you've had, uh, and but the, but that a lot of that can be attributed to a very um, conservative yet methodical approach to things. It feels like to me, uh, as I follow the company very very closely, that you make uh, decisions. You manage the company closely on a day to day basis, a month to month, quarter to quarter, but that you are consistently making long term strategic decisions. Uh, that that could result in another 20 years of continued growth and success for Fortuna. Any comments on that? I am an investor in Fortuna. And uh, I think of uh, value over the long term, because I am a long-term shareholder of Fortuna. So, yes, I, I, I try to reason everything on, 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 on value and, and, and long-term value. Having said that, I believe that one of the most difficult challenges of being a CEO, not just in mining, but in, across many industries, is the pressure that we get from, you know, fund managers and, and uh, sometimes hedge fund managers or even traders and speculators uh, because they need, you know, short-term results, right? Uh, yeah. So balancing the sometimes difficult long-term decisions that perhaps are misunderstood or can be painful over the short term, uh, you know, balancing that with the short-term pressures that we get for, for those quarterly results um, or for periods of capital deployment in a difficult market, you know, when you think is the right thing, that that's a most difficult part of, of, of a CEO role, I would say. You know? So, uh, for example, we built the Segela mine. We made the acquisition and built the mine. At a time, we forget now, when it was not very fashionable to go into big capital projects. It was not yeah, very right. fashionable. You know, companies were stopping or deaccelerating capital deployment, and we launched into it. And, what, and now we can be in a position to harvest. Gold yeah. is getting close to $2,200 per ounce, and we're in a position to harvest the value. Yeah. But that's because we made difficult decisions. We were misunderstood. You yeah. know, we were, uh, you know. Uh, questioned. You were questioned. questioned. And, and, you know, I, I am fine with that. I am fine yeah. with that because uh, through that process, uh, I listened to, to my shareholders, be it. Uh, traders or investors or speculators, they are shareholders. And I listen to them and, and, and I weigh all of their concerns. Uh, but, you know, we cannot manage a mining company, uh, you know, thinking of uh, quarter to quarter, right? right? We, 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 you know, our expansion to West Africa was highly criticized and, you know, for the right reasons. They were 
questions on our ability to successfully integrate a West African business, uh, a question about the capital deployment that came to, to attach to that acquisition with a build at a time where, as I said, building was not very fashionable. Right. Uh, and, uh, you know, two and a half years have gone and, and uh, now I think we can show that it worked, it worked well, and we're all benefiting from it. We generated $70 million of free cash flow <laughs> from operations in the third quarter, $66 million in the fourth quarter. We're paying our debt facility at an accelerated rate. Now the debt, as I said, is, you know, for a billion dollar company in revenue, which we are at today's prices, uh, $80 million in debt is nothing. That's what we yeah. have net of, you know, total net debt is 80 million. That's nothing uh, for a company of our size. Uh, we're investing heavily on organic growth. That's where the money is going. So we are in a very strong position to harvest today. But yeah. at the time of seeding, it was not, it was not easy. <laughs> I, I I remember Jorge, uh, and uh, I, I wanted to throw in that uh, any questions that people had two and a half, three years ago, well, you've provided a pretty good answer uh, here in the present day, right? The Seguela mine, the, the decision to go to West Africa uh, has proven to be uh, a wise one. Um, so congratulations on that. And and I, I want to ask you uh I get the feeling, you know, you talk about being in a position now to harvest gains. Uh, obviously, you've been you've been with Fortuna uh, from the very beginning over this almost twenty year period. Does it feel like to you, as you as you've you've grown this company, um, does it feel like to you that the momentum that there's that it feel I, I don't know I just get this feeling like the the momentum is picking up obviously continued uh, uh, good prices and silver and gold will help even more but do you feel almost like a momentum that the company has that, that maybe is 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 compared to what you've seen in the past? Yes, uh, compared to what I've seen over the last couple of years, yes, there yeah. there been you know some. Uh, I believe still a very challenging market, mm -hmm. you know, still a very challenging market. I mean, the disconnect between our underlying metals yeah. and the valuation of mining stocks is nothing I've seen in 30 plus years of professional career. Yeah. Uh, but uh, when I interact with investors, not speculators, not traders, investors, no? When I interact with investors, everybody gets it. Everybody is in tune with what we're doing. Everybody assigns, uh, you know, uh, is supportive of our capital allocation priorities today. Uh, you know, and as I say, you cannot defy math for long, right? You, right. or free <clears throat> cash flow yield, or free cash flow yield today is around 16%. Yeah. No? <clears throat> yeah. So, you know, I I believe that uh, we have a big opportunity to, to re-rate, uh, you know, and, and, and continue doing the work. It's been, uh, uh, you know, we have put our shareholders to the test going to West Africa, building. Uh, Mexico has been noisy for us over the last two years. That mine was for many years, one of the top primary silver producers in the world, a top 12, 13 primary silver producer in the world, a great asset in our portfolio. And over the last uh, you know, couple of years under the current Mexican administration, it's been difficult and noisy. The mine never lost a day of production due to all of these permitting issues we faced because our team just did an excellent job managing complex situations. But it's been noisy. And, and I believe that also, in, you know, that noise impacted the the the, the attitude of, of uh, market uh, act, uh, participants towards the company. But, you know, we continue delivering the ounces at a competitive cost, generate the margins, allocate yeah. the capital carefully, quarter after quarter, quarter after quarter. And uh, 
I, that's better than me just going out, you know, promoting. <laughs> right. I think look right. at our results. I say, look at our results. Yeah. Look at the, uh, like you mentioned, look at the cash that the company is generating. And it, it really is incredible. And at the end of the day, uh, <clears throat> cash is king. You know, I mean, I, I'm, an, I'm an old accountant and I understand how all these different, you know, uh, accounting entries and accounting rules can affect, you know, short term numbers. But at the end of the day, in any business, cash flow is the king and you are delivering uh, unbelievable cash flow right now. Um, and I have one last question for you, Jorge, uh, as you look out through, I guess we're almost, uh, you know, in mid March, but as you look out through the rest of 2024, what are you most uh, optimistic about? What are you most excited about for Fortuna? Exploration or exploration. Yeah. Uh, I think I haven't seen Fortuna's portfolio with so many high-value opportunities in the past. No, mm -hmm. We always had an excitement here or an excitement there, but today all the opportunities that we continue seeing emerging out of the Seguela camp, all of the opportunities we're currently seeing and, and, and working to capture at the Ambassador, the discovery of the Yesi Lane provides optionality for the San Jose mine. At Yaramoco, when we acquired Roxford back in 2021, Yaramoco was set for closure in 2023. Yaramoco didn't close in 2023. It had a superb year where it beat guidance and we, you know, uh, expanded, did an upward revision on guidance and the mine still came in on the upper end of that revised guidance. Uh, it has been a tremendous cash flow contributor throughout 2023. So it, it not only not closed in 2023, it had an excellent 2023, it's looking at a very strong 2024, at a very strong 2025, and right now it's set to exhaust reserves in 2026. But we continue exploring. So the, the exploration opportunities in the portfolio is a source of big excitement for all of us here in Fortuna. And as I said before, this year, we have our largest ever exploration budget, $40 million, plus $40 million, which includes over 200,000 meters of drilling across the portfolio. Excellent. Jorge, uh, on behalf of myself, our viewer, I want to say thank you for joining us today. You gave us a great comprehensive uh, overview of what's been going on at Fortuna. But I think uh, I, for myself, and I would uh, think that our viewer as well, we have a lot to look forward to as we move through 2024. Is there anything that I forgot to ask you? Any uh, closing remarks that you'd like to make? No, I think we touched on the main uh, points. Uh, Ron, thank you again for the opportunity to speak to your audience. Well, Jorge, thank you. And uh, we'll look forward to talking to you soon. Bye.